Hey everybody, it's Uncle Doug. I'm coming to you from the basement of one of the ministry houses here in Liberty, Missouri. We're still not quite finished uh, clearing this place out. We're um, waiting on electrical hookups uh, for uh, the new the new ministry house in Excelsior Springs. But I'm going to get uh, show you that soon and introduce you. I'm sorry, I'm in a work shirt. It's uh, July 19th, about 10 a.m. Uh, we are headed uh, into uh, work on the remodel and uh, get some work done at the farm. Uh, so, but I wanted to get a quick video out to everybody. Um, I want to talk to you some about how to get your cup full and how to help other people get their cup full and the reality of that. Um, first, uh, let me say we're stretched pretty thin right now. If uh, God had put on your heart to give some money to help us do what we do now would be a really good time I mean like right now <laughs> would be a really good time um, I've got to get um, uh, some money in the bank by this afternoon to make sure everything goes where it's got to go uh, you can PayPal to FOTM at fellowship of the or if you go to the website click on the little piggy bank there's a place where you can give with a credit card without having PayPal um, or you can call the number on the website and we'll take a credit card over the phone for you. Um, I can do on, on my phone, <laughs> wherever I am. So um, if uh, God's been putting it on your heart and you just haven't got around to it, now would be a great time. It would really make a big difference here um, to, uh, to help. Uh, I'm going to be talking some about... Uh, the upgrades to the septic system and some of the other stuff that we're going to be doing here pretty soon. But uh, right now, just the regular monthly bills. The 9th of Av and the three weeks of all we've talked about before. The 9th of Av is uh, the 22nd, which is Sunday. And we've got a conference starting tomorrow, a Liberty Conference here. And people coming in for that. It looks so far like, how many do we think we have? Five, maybe? Yeah, five or six. Uh, that have RSVP'd that they're coming. Uh, and a few more may trickle in, and then all of our regular folks, and we'll just have a weekend of fellowship and prayer and whatever. Um, anyway, but the three weeks of awe, leading up to the ninth of Av, which is the day the temple was destroyed twice, are typically horribly difficult financially for us. I don't know why it is. Maybe it's because... It's typically in the summer and people are on vacation and they're not they're not home they're not thinking about us they're not watching the videos they're not whatever or it just is a time to make us cry <laughs> sorry about that guys call came in um, yeah year after year I try not to speak it or predict it or whatever but year after year man this three weeks of awe is just a dead zone and it's just really difficult um, financially for us let me try and fix this lighting problem here um, anyway so uh, right now is a real struggle if there's anything you can do to help that would be great um, oh, maybe that's a little better maybe not um, I, uh, I want to talk to you some, I, I, if you've read the books, you understand what I'm talking about. Um, I was talking to the Lord years ago about the latter rain and the early rain, and there was all these people praying um, for God to pour his spirit on all flesh and for this, you know, to come, and uh, there was an event called uh, The Call in Nashville. And I, you know, 100,000 kids or whatever getting head fasted for 40 days and we're getting together to pray at Titan Stadium in Nashville. And everything in me was kind of irritated by it. And I, I didn't understand why I'd be irritated that 100,000 young people were getting together to pray. That seems like a good Sorry about that. Um... I um, I was praying. I said, Lord, why am I bothered that, that all these kids are getting together to pray? And he said, it's a giant waste of time. And I said, 
Well, they're pra praying for your you to spirit pour your spirit out on all flesh. What's the what's the problem? Uh, you know, I'm when are you gonna do this? I'm ready any time now. He says, as soon as you guys start pouring my spirit out on all flesh, I'm like, what? He says, yeah, I put endless springs of living water inside of each of you. As soon as you get off, your, uh, stop being lukewarm and stagnant and get off your lees, this show's on. I said, Lord, uh, so we just need to teach the church how to pour their cup out on the people around them and that's it? And he's like, yeah, I'm waiting on you. Uh, sitting on your lees, by the way, if you're not real Bible savvy, probably went over your head, but there's a, a passage uh, I believe in Jeremiah where it talks about Israel is a wine that is sat on its lees and uh, that means that uh, typically uh, you would uh, uh, stomp the grapes and pour the juice into a, a, a jar or a wine vat or whatever and then at some point you would clarify the wine but you'd let it settle and all the little uh, bits of twig or leaf or toenail or <laughs> whatever's in there sorts to the bottom and then you would real carefully pour off the top and leave all that junk at the bottom that's the lees and if it sits on its lees then it um it, it absorbs the flavor of all that junk and uh it kind of turns to vinegar and gets useless and so and plus it oxygenates the wine to pour it back and forth from uh, one decanter to another so uh, you want to leave the sludge essentially at the bottom and um, get the get the wine out. And um, so he says that Israel is a wine that has sat on its lees, meaning it, it just it didn't do anything. It just sat there and um, turned sour. Uh, and so that was the picture he was he was showing about the need for us to pour our cups out on one another. And instead of what's really happening is. People go to church, uh, fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, and then um, use that, that, it, that infilling just to survive the week, just to deal with the world, and not necessarily to pour out on others and to bless other people and help other people get their cup full. Um, in the Rain Right Now, Lord book, which I'd, I'd recommend you uh, get off the website, it's a free download uh, PDF file there, you can order paperback. I feel like the books ought to be free, but we, we're not in a position where we can print the books and just give them away. Um, but the PDF file is there. You can read it online or the audio book you can listen to for free. If you're going to print the book, it's 600-some um, pages. Um, you're probably going to spend less money ordering a paperback than the inkjet uh, cartridges you're going to spend trying to print it in the paper. So we have the... Uh, um, we have the uh, uh, paperback available there for you to order, but uh, we, we price it uh, real inexpensively, as, as low as we possibly can, so you guys can have a copy. But um, anyway, um, he showed me a picture. I, I talk about in the rain right now, Lord Book, of the church and the way it ought to be. And it, uh, he showed me a, a champagne glasses at a wedding stacked in a pyramid where you pour in the top one and it overflows all the cups all the way down that that's the way church ought to work that whoever's got the biggest cup whoever's got the freshest cup whoever's pouring out the most ought to be at the top overflowing onto everybody else all the way down uh, so that everyone's full everyone's getting a fresh infilling uh, anyone that says you've got all the holy spirit you're ever going to get is a liar and you shouldn't listen to them about anything um in in, in fact uh, in John 20, 28, Jesus breathed on the disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. In Acts 2, uh, they were in the upper room and the place was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. In Acts 4, they get broke out of jail by angels. They gather back in the upper room and the place is shaken and they're filled with the Holy Spirit again. Uh, so it's clearly not a one-time thing. And the Apostle Paul says to be being filled the, the tense that he uses on the verb there is a, is a constant imperative that it's to be being filled all the time not a one time thing and uh, the Bible ends with the spirit and the bride say come all who are thirsty come and uh, uh, drink from the living water so we are 
the bride that is supposed to help them connect to the Holy Spirit so that they can drink and be filled. It's not a, a one-time thing. Jesus says, if you drink of this water, you'll never be thirsty again. That doesn't mean you'll drink once. That means it'll be constantly available and there won't be any need for anything else. And uh, so in Mark chapter 2, there's a story of a woman with a blood problem. And uh, it's kind of a picture of the church currently. She had been to all the guys with doctorates. And they took all her money and left her worse off than she was before. And uh, that's kind of a picture of the church in America. Probably lots of other places. And uh, But she knew if I could just get to Jesus, I'd be okay. So he's in the midst of a crowd. The disciples are being bodyguards pushing him through the crowd. She sneaks up behind him and touches the corner of his prayer shawl. And uh, sucks out the healing that she needs. He stops in his tracks and says, who touched me? The disciples are like, are you kidding? Everybody's touching you. You know, he's like, uh-uh. Somebody touched me different. Power, uh, virtue has left me, it says in the King James. In the Greek, it says dunamis, the word we use for dynamite. Uh, that the power of God has drained out of me. And he stops and he says, who touched me? And she comes forward and says, it was me. And I, can, I, I know that I'm healed. And he says, go, your faith has healed you. Okay, this is a picture of someone he did not intentionally heal. She took the kingdom of heaven by force. She believed in faith, reached up, grabbed the hem of his garment, and sucked out the healing that she needed. Uh, that is uh, taking the kingdom of God by force. That is what he wants us to do, to come to him with expectation, with faith, and to know that we can receive what we need from him. Um, what we do here... Uh, to teach people how to get their cup full, uh, a lot of times me or somebody else will sit with them and hold their hand and say, Brother, I love you. I give you permission to stick a straw in my cup and suck out whatever the Lord lets you have. And uh, just the good stuff, you always put your armor on. You don't let anybody lay hands on you, not your mama, not your boyfriend, not your husband. Nobody lay hands on you without shields on. You say, Lord, I want whatever Jesus I can get. I don't want their flesh, I don't want demons, I don't want anything else. There's a lot of people uh, went to Todd Bentley conferences, pastors, and said, Lord, give me whatever he's got. I want that anointing. And they receive, you know, because it's, because it's based in envy and greed and uh, self, uh, they get all kinds of bad stuff. And they go home, get tattoos and a Harley and start kicking people in the face and who knows what. There was a lot of division uh, caused over that whole mess. And there's other people that uh, they get, you know, th there's no telling. If you, had, if you don't put your armor on and you go to somewhere ever and say, Lord, just, I, I want that. I want, give me whatever he's got. You, you could be clucking like a chicken in no time. I mean, there's no telling what nonsense out there you could, you could receive from somebody. But I know that I can go to a warlock convention and say, Lord, I don't want anything but Jesus. And they can all lay hands on me. I'm not getting anything but what I came for, which is Jesus. He's a good dad. If we ask for an egg, he's not going to give us a stone. And so on. So I know that, it, that I can, in faith, trust that if I'm asking for Jesus, I'm going to get Jesus. So I encourage people, wherever you are, uh, uh, whoever's praying for you, put your shields on and say, Lord, I want all of you. And I want none of this guy. <laughs> I want none. I don't want anything that's his. I want whatever's yours. And he will, he, he will be faithful to meet you there. Anyway, so whenever we sit somebody in a chair, I give them the lecture, tell them to armor up, make sure they're asking for the good stuff, whatever's of him, and, um, uh, and give them permission to uh, whatever I have is yours. You know, if it was... If it was groceries, I'd give you the last whatever. If you need a place to stay, if you need a whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. And it's no different with the stuff the Lord gave me. If I have the gift of tongues, if I have discernment, if I have a warfare, you know, weapons and shields and cloaks and whatever, I'd be glad for you to have it. Because I know the Lord's going to protect me. And I know the Lord's going to fill me. And I know the Lord's going to replace it somehow. And um, I know the reality that if I say, even if I don't get it back... I want you to hear God. I want you to see him as a good dad. I want you to hear him better. Um, 
he might it might go and I might not get it back and there have been times where I didn't get it back uh, or I didn't get it back right away or I got it back but it was a different flavor um, but it was always multiplied um, if, if I sacrificially lay something down he's going to replace it with more or something better or something so and I trust that so um, I don't offer to fill somebody's cup in greed so that I'll get more I just offer and leave it to the Lord and do whatever I um, uh, most of the people here are sensitive enough that if we hold your hand we can feel stuff flowing like Jesus could feel hey somebody some something happened somebody touched me spiritually and I can tell if somebody puts their hand on my shoulder if they're just patting me or if they're pushing at me and Lord fill his cup and Lord bless him and Lord you know and there's the Holy Spirit's moving in my direction or if they're sucking out of cup, my cup and the Holy Spirit's moving their direction uh, I, I think it's bad form to try to suck out of somebody's cup that didn't give you permission to. Um, let me just leave it, leave that there. But, um, but you know, Jesus had it happen to him. Excuse me, and uh, you know, he he complimented your faith healed you. You know, you 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 came and you grabbed it and you got it and you got healed and God bless you. You know, keep moving. Um, I got stuff to do. <laughs> so, uh, but it, it's a great example of somebody Jesus didn't intentionally heal. That she she ran to the cross, got what she needed, um, and, and uh, by faith. It, it's a beautiful thing. Anyway, and it still works that way. I, I could give you hundreds and hundreds of stories of filling people's cups, them getting delivered, getting free, uh, hearing better getting gifts, hundreds of stories, hundreds of stories, so, so many, you couldn't talk me out of the reality of it, it's absolutely for real, little kids that I just put my hand on them, say, Lord, give them all the peace that I got, and bam, they're out like a light, um, you know, within a couple of minutes, what, whatever, um, one way to do deliverance is to focus on the demons, find out why they're there, hope that they tell you the truth, which you're not gonna, going to, rebuke them, wave a Bible at them, you know, whatever, or we can force fill your cup with so much Jesus that all the stuff that doesn't belong in your cup just slides out the top and runs away. Uh, for example, I, one of the guys a year or two ago changed the oil in the driveway uh, on one of the vans and uh, so he's got this open container of stuff of oil sitting in the driveway and uh, I run into him I'm like dude it's fixing to rain you better do something with that oil and he didn't <laughs> so what do you think happens the oil the water's heavier than the oil uh, specific density and everything it rains Water goes to the bottom, oil comes to the top, uh, to the top, the bucket fills up, and all the oil runs off into the driveway. Um, and it's kind of that, that's, that's the way we do deliverance, it is mostly by focusing on getting your cup so full of Jesus nothing else can fit, and it really does work that way. Uh, there's so many churches I've been in where I'm watching during the worship music, and they're all, you know... We raise our hands, we all fall down at the feet of Jesus. Of course, they're always doing it standing up. <laughs> and uh, I watch their cups getting full. And somebody stops and says, okay, we're going to do announcements and take up an offering and start the sermon. And, and, and they're like, oh, I was, you know, give me, give me three more songs. I was almost full. And then the preacher comes out, and unless he's really anointed, he's, he's, uh, preaching knowledge not spirit unless the Holy Spirit is operating through him it's gnosis it's it, it's puffing up yellow you know who wrote the book of Hebrews or heavenly budgeting or why you have to tithe or it's stealing from God or whatever and and 
it's not edifying them spiritually. It might it might teach them stuff mentally, um, but unless the Lord is really speaking through that person, it's not getting their cup full of the good stuff, and um, and they leave unprepared for the week. Um, whatever they've got in their cups only going to last for till Monday night, and you know whatever. So we've got to teach them how to run to God, grab the, the hem of his garment and suck what they need. The reality that he's that available. If you can sit across from me and hold my hand and feel the Holy Spirit moving and get in your cup full, well then you can hold Jesus' hand. You can reach up and hold his hand. You can, whatever the Lord shows you. Uh, one of the guys here, uh, he, he saw his cup and he was a little teapot. And uh, he would pray, Lord, please, please fill my cup, Lord. And a big teapot would come and fill his little teapot. And then he was supposed to go out filling other people uh, all through the day. And any time that something messes with you, um, anger, fear, addiction, whatever, it's just because your cup's not full. If you'll stop what you're doing, get your cup full, everything's right with the world. You, you, get, the, you get to that that place where you're so full of the Holy Spirit you just feel like Superman like like everything's right whatever happens to me I can handle it's all good me and Jesus are okay and um, you get to that place uh, by drinking from the river by the reality of getting your cup full from him now uh, it it may fill your cup for me to preach to you or, or uh, whoever, Keith Green or David Wilkerson or Art Katz or other people that, that speak anointed things and edify you and build you up and encourage you and you're like, yeah, 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 that's, that's helping me get closer to the Lord. And we are supposed to do that. It says the Spirit and the Bride say come. So you can go to the Holy Spirit and get your cup full or you, can go to, you should be able to go to the Bride and get your cup full, which is the church, except... So many places have nothing to do with the Holy Spirit, want nothing to do with the Holy Spirit, and are actually puffing up with knowledge instead of instead of getting your spirit full. Um, I want to encourage you to practice. Okay, first of all, uh, in some way or another, um, get it in your head that you can receive directly from the Lord. That he's a good dad, that he loves you, that he wants your cup full, that he wants you to keep your cup full, that he wants to give you a bigger cup and grow you and stretch you so there's more and more of him and less and less of you all the time. Uh, believe that you can reach up and hold his hand, that you can stick your face in the river that flows from the throne of God, that you can, however, however you need to imagine it, but believe in faith that you can receive from him without a sin. Uh, sorry, uh, size limit exceeded, it says on the card here. Believe that you can receive from him without a synagogue or a church building or anything else. And then reach up and um, don't imagine a, a, a garden hose. Imagine the Alaska pipeline. Imagine giant flow filling your cup whenever you need it. Um, I have to be in a place where maybe I'm standing in front and people are lined up to come get their cup full and hold my hand and pray with me. I've got to be constantly getting my cup full as I'm pouring out on other people um, and knowing that the Lord's going. And sometimes I'll hold somebody's hand and they don't get what's in my cup. The Lord will have me hold his hand because he's got something they need that I don't have that goes through me to help them get their cup full. But because I was willing some flavor of it, some piece of it sticks. And whatever that was that they needed, maybe it's long-suffering or patience or some flavor of something I didn't have. Because I was a vessel that was used for that, I get a piece of it. I get to stick. Some of it sticks. And uh, that's a beautiful thing, how gracious he is with his power and glory. Anyway, I want to encourage you. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of marriages healed where the maybe the husband doesn't chase God like he should and the wife is way out in front and doesn't know what to do and, and pestering him to go to church doesn't work and whatever. And I tell them, uh, at night when you're in bed, just put your hand on his shoulder and say, Lord, every good thing you gave me, give it to him. 
and push him out in front, make him the man he's supposed to be, uh, have him have a heart for you and bless you, and Lord, everything that you did for me to want that, give it to him, even if I never get it back. And God's going to hear that prayer, and stuff's going to change. And his demons may roll over and smack you <laughs> and tell you to knock it off, or he'll absorb it, and it'll get in his cup, and you'll start to see changes in him. I can give you testimony after testimony of, of marriages that are that are on track and doing great, and they're both seeking the Lord with just her laying down what she had for him, or vice versa. Um, anyway, so um, things are definitely going to change. I can't tell you it's for sure that he's that it may not get rejected and spit out, but you can expect something to change. Um, the same with you. If if you're frustrated and angry. Uh, fearful, bitter, uh, oppressed, attacked, whatever, it's just because your cup's not full. Stop what you're doing, reach up and hold his hand, suck real hard from the river, and get your cup full. Um, the, the, whatever's left of the Southern Baptist in me hears me talk like this and says, man, you're crazy. What are you, st what are you telling these people? That's crazy. But the reality for me for the last 13 years is that it's absolutely true. It absolutely works. It's absolutely real. And if you will start uh, pouring your cup out on the people around you, first on your own family, on your kids, on your husband, on whatever, on, on your wife, on uh, then, then at your work, at, at your church, wherever you are, uh, just intentionally, willfully, Ball up every good thing in you, everything that's from Jesus, everything that's holy, and and push it at wherever it needs to go. You'll see stuff change. You'll see stuff happen, and you will go, "Wow, this is real." And uh, and it is, and it works. Anyway, um, thanks for listening. Uh, again, if you'd like to help, uh, the books are on the website. Uh, if you'd like to help, uh, if you'd like to help, there's a piggy bank there, and you can give or uh, just come uh, give us a call, and we'll we'll do something over the phone or whatever. Anyway, thanks for listening. Uh, if you're coming to the conference, look forward to seeing you, and we'll try and uh, introduce everybody to the folks that come and see what happens. And uh, keep watching the channel. I'm going to try and catch up and get a whole bunch of videos made uh, here shortly as we finally get. Um, the move finished from Liberty to Excelsior Springs where the farm is uh, or near where the farm is and um, get back and report on all the good stuff that's happening there. Some really beautiful, really beautiful changes in people and some real miracles. So um, um, anyway, more updates on that later. Thanks for listening. God bless you all. I'm trying to get this online uh, today as quick as I can. Bye-bye.